Hello everybody, I'm here with a video uh, which is related to a, a mechanical system, a rotational mechanical system consisting of a uniform slender rod with a mass M, right? And a length L as you could see in this picture, right? So the length of this bar is L, right? Uh, it's connected to a spring here with the uh, stiffness of K and a a dash pot or a damper, trans, translational damper with a damping coefficient. So B here is the damping coefficient and K is the stiffness of B. Now, if this was, if you, you had a, uh, you know, vibration, typical vibration course, uh, B is denoted by C actually, the damping coefficient. But if you're taking a course that is more, um, interdisciplinary like in uh, system dynamics because uh, C is used for capacitance and the analogy between a mechanical and electrical system then B is used for the damping coefficient. Now the values of K and B are given as 160 newtons per meter and, and 80 newton second per meter. The length is 4 meters let's say as you could see this guy is pivoting about A which is one-fourth of the length in, right? So our objective is to find mass M such that the damping ratio is, this zeta is equal to 0.6. So we are saying that we want this system to be, as, to be an underdamp. Remember, an underdamp system is one that the damping ratio is between 0 and 1, right? So, how do we go about um, coming up with the solutions uh, to this problem? So, first we start with a free body diagram to get the differential equation of the system, right? So, we know that we do have reactions AX and AY here, right? And uh, let me just show you how if we... Now, we're assuming that the disturbance is clockwise. It really doesn't matter if the disturbance is clockwise and counter, uh, or counterclockwise, it doesn't make any difference. Just keep in mind that this system has already reached an equilibrium position, and if we forget about doing a static analysis uh, and just go directly to a dynamic analysis, the effect of gravity is going to be a wash, so you don't see G in the equation. I think I have shown this in another video to you guys, but in any case, if we disturb this system by angle theta, so this is theta and this is theta. So the amount of deformation in this spring here, let's erase a little bit of this, right? So the amount of deformation here is going to be based on a small angle theta since this is 3L over 4. Tangent of this angle is the same as the angle is going to be... Uh, if we call this, for example, uh, I don't know what we should call it. Why don't we just call it delta, right? Oops. Using the eraser here, right? It would be delta opposite over adjacent, right? Remember, the for a small angle, the angle and the uh, tangent of the angle is the same. So delta becomes 3L over 4 times theta. So this is 3L over 4 theta. Similarly, this, without even naming it, should be then L over 4 theta since... This is L over 4, right? Using the same idea. So now the force generated in the spring, once this guy goes down, the spring is stretched, so it wants to go back to its initial position. So it would be, the force of the spring would be K times the amount of deformation, which is 3L over 4 theta, right? And similarly, the damper moves up uh, by the distance L over 4 theta, but the speed of this is going to be L over 4 theta dot. And you know that the force of the uh, the damper is proportional to the speed. So it's B times the speed of that point, which is L over 4 theta dot, right? So now if you go ahead and apply the equation of motion for a rotational system, the equation of motion is always torque or moment about the pivot point equal to moment of inertia. Now, typically moment of inertia is denoted by I, but again, for a type of um, 
as I said, system dynamics, because I use, is used for current, and if you're dealing with mechanical, electrical system and the analogy, then um, we use J. So remember, J here is the polar, uh, I'm sorry, is the mass moment of inertia. Again, I was trying to avoid making that mistake. Uh, mass moment of inertia. You get tempted to say polar moment of inertia. J sub A actually mathematically is the integral of R squared dm. But I'll show you how you can find J sub A in a minute. So always the, the direction of disturbance is taken as positive, right? And notice that both of these forces have um, negative moment about A because they're going counterclockwise. So the moment of the, uh, the damping force would be B L over 4 theta. That this is the force times this length, which is L over 4. And it's negative. And similarly, the moment of the uh, spring force times this distance, which is 3L over 4, right? Equal J sub A. And alpha, remember, alpha is theta double dot, right? So basically, we are trying to get the differential equation. So this becomes uh, J sub A theta double dot plus, uh, let's see, uh, B L squared over 16 theta, right? theta dot, rather, plus k or 9k L squared over 16, right, theta equal to zero. So this is the uh, homogeneous differential equation, second order with the theta double dot, theta dot, and theta in it. Let me show you how you can determine J sub A. You have to use what we call parallel axis equation, guys. You remember that? Let's move to this page. So remember, our bar is pivoting about this point. This is L over 4, and this is 3L over 4, the remainder. G is right here, the center of gravity of a slender rod, right? Of a uniform slender rod. Right? J sub bar or J sub G is 112 ml squared. This you get from, by integration or you get it from a table. So typically it's given to you or you get it from a table for a slender rod. But J sub A is what you need, J about the pivot point. But based on parallaxis equation or theorem, actually, J sub A is becomes J bar plus MD squared. Therefore, J bar is 112 ML squared, right? Remember, M is unknown in this problem. These what these the distance between always the center of gravity and the pivot point, which have, actually happens to be L over 4. So if you squared L over 4 or 1 fourth becomes 1 16. So what is 1 12 plus 1 16? If you factor that out, factor ML squared out, that I believe becomes 7 over 48 ML squared. So let's go back. Remember our differential equation was J sub A theta double dot plus, let's see, I can't remember that, B L squared over 16, right? Theta dot plus, I remember this one, 9K L squared over 16 theta equals zero. Let's go ahead and put the uh, J here. I'm running out of space, guys. Sorry for the mess here. Notice that actually L squared is common, so it can be canceled out. So now our differential equation is reduced to 48 m theta double dot plus b over 16 theta dot plus 9 k over 16 uh, theta. Now keep in mind that we already know the values. So, so basically what we have is what we call an j, let me actually put it in a different color for you, a j uh, equivalent theta double dot, a typical rotational mechanical system consisting of a mass, a rotating mass, right? Uh, uh, a damper and a, and a spring. This is, uh, we call the uh, B equivalent, the equivalent uh, damping coefficient, and this is the K equivalent. So this becomes the uh, B equivalent, then when you compare, and this is K equivalent, and this is J or mass equivalent. Now let's go back. Remember, K is 160 and B is 180. I'm sorry, 80. Let's see, A, uh, 80, yep. So if you put 80 in here, 
and 160 here I pick those numbers I guess in on purpose so then our B equivalent becomes 5 and our K equivalent becomes a nice 90 and of course M is unknown guys now what is the definition of zeta zeta the damping ratio is B divided by B critical what is B critical the critical damping my coefficient is 2 square root of km. Now remember, guys, these are all equivalent in a system like this. All right? Well, of course, m here, you can replace it by j equivalent because it's a rotational system. All right, so if we square both sides to get rid of the radical, zeta squared is b equivalent squared over 4k equivalent, j equivalent, and then you can put zeta, remember we want it find m such that zeta is what? 0.6, right? So if you put 0.6 here, or actually you could solve for m directly, but anyways, 0.6 squared equal, I guess I have to erase this now, I need the room. All right, uh, b equivalent is 5, 5 squared divided by 4, k equivalent is 90, and j equivalent is 7 over 48 m. So solve for the mass. Mass is the only unknown and looks like the mass is going to come out to be 1.3 uh, three kilograms. So if the mass is equal to this number or has a magnitude of 1.3 kilograms, then this system would be an overdamped system, which means, we, I'm sorry, underdamped system, which means it will oscillate like this. Remember, in a system like this, you do have a decaying envelope, and the system will just die down based on that decaying envelope. Okay? Uh, as always, if you like the video, uh, please subscribe, and I'll come up with new videos every week. More than one video is for sure every week. Uh, and uh, as always, thanks for watching and listening.